Good happy Wednesday evening. I'm Riley King, and welcome to this Wednesday evening edition of the Riley King Newscast, right here on the Riley King Network. Let's get started right now. First up, former President Trump pleads the fifth in D position. Let's take a listen to that video from ABC News. They say durable is the new black. Okay, no one says that, but it's true. Just ask Sharon. After three years. The former President Trump departing the New York Attorney General's office a short time ago. This is after he invoked his Fifth Amendment rights, declining to answer questions today during testimony as part of the civil investigation into his business dealings. ABC News senior investigative reporter Aaron Katersky outside the New York Attorney General's office. So, Aaron, the president just left. What is the very latest on Trump's deposition? And just remind us, please, what are the legal ramifications that he faces? Deidre, the former president spent about six hours here at the New York Attorney General's office in a 16th floor conference room, declining to answer questions about his business practices, namely the valuations of his real estate portfolio, including a building at 40 Wall Street, just across the street from the very office where he spent the bulk of his day. The stakes are quite high. There could be a civil lawsuit from the attorney general's office that could, if he is ultimately convicted, result in millions of dollars in fines. But anything that he would have said could also have been used by the Manhattan District Attorney's Office, where prosecutors have been conducting a parallel criminal investigation. So it seems as if, uh, after mocking people who invoked the fifth, the former president did it because, as he said in a statement, he felt he had no choice. And Aaron, you told us he was there at least six hours. So that means that those who were questioning him, they were going to go through every single question that they had to ask, right? Even when it became clear at the beginning of the deposition that Trump was not going to answer any question from the investigators, they still wanted to get those questions on the record. And so they made him sit there and they asked each and every question that they had in order to make him invoke his Fifth Amendment rights against self-incrimination each and every time. Perhaps they were hoping that maybe he would answer one of them, but it's unlikely that he answered any, according to a, a source familiar with how the deposition went today. And the former president said he was acting on advice of counsel. So, Aaron, you mentioned that in large part this is about the way that some assets are valued. So you told us about that one building, which is very close, as you mentioned, to where he spent the day today. But there's also golf courses. And this could imply a mismatch of millions of dollars. Well, that's right. And, and, and all of this began, Deidre, with the testimony before Congress of Michael Cohen, formerly former President Trump's fixer and personal attorney. And he told Congress that the Trump Organization messed with the valuations of real estate property. When it was convenient, as they were seeking tax breaks, they wanted the value to, to be suppressed. But when they were seeking uh, loans, maybe they wanted the value to, uh, to, to, to go up so that lenders were more confident in, in their ability to repay. And, and so the, the, the difference in those valuations uh, could have been uh, millions of dollars when it comes to the former president's tax bill. So whether he misled uh, lenders, insurance companies, tax authorities, it is all what the attorney general's office is now deciding whether it merits a, a civil lawsuit, any kind of a civil enforcement action. And a decision on that should be coming soon. Lawyers with the attorney general's office said in open court not long ago that they were nearing the end of the investigation, that a decision on an enforcement action was coming soon. They were hoping to get some answers from President Trump here first. Aaron, thank you for your excellent reporting. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. Retired Marine Colonel on impact of PACT Act. Let's take a listen to that video from ABC News. Order for a Sonic Churro Shake. I got the ice cream. Sprinkling the cinnamon sugar and adding a churro on top. Ready with the Sonic Churro Shake. 
President Biden signing the PACT Act to law just a few hours ago. The legislation will help veterans who were exposed to toxins during their time in the U.S. Armed Forces. Biden addressing the crowd, praising all veterans for their sacrifice and their service. PACT Act is the least we can do for the countless men and women, many of whom may be in this room for all I know, who suffered toxic exposure while serving their country. Less than 1% of you, less than 1% of you, risk everything to defend 99% of the population. 1% risk 99%. We owe you. You're the backbone. You're the steel. You're the sinew. You're the, you're, you're the very fiber that makes this country what it is. For more, we bring in now ABC News contributor and former State Department official, retired Marine Colonel Steve Ganyard. Steve, thanks so much for joining us. President Biden celebrating the passing of the PACT Act, calling it the most significant law our nation has ever passed to help millions of veterans exposed to burn pits. Do you agree with that? Um, I think it's a bit of hyperbole in there, Deirdre, but uh, it is an important act. Um, you know, there's, there's an old adage that, uh, that's called the Pottery Barn Rule, and the Pottery Barn Rule goes like this. If you break it, you bought it, and that needs to be the case with America's veterans. Going back not only in 20 years, the past uh, 20 years of war in Iraq and Afghanistan, going back to Vietnam and still Korean War uh, veterans still alive, still requiring that care. What happened here with the burn pits is that a traditional way of getting rid of trash, every every kind of trash you can imagine, imagine that uh, was on any kind of base around the world, was just burned. They would put some sort of, a, of a diesel fuel or some sort of a fuel into that pit and burn it. Uh, they didn't know that the toxic fumes, or nobody realized the toxic fumes that were being released could cause serious problems. So now you have these veterans showing up out years later with these horrible problems that could be directly linked to these burn pits. So the problem was that nobody really documented at the time, nobody knew that it was going on, nobody knew the extent, but it's clear that there's some sort of correlation here between these uh, these illnesses that the, that the um, veterans get years later, uh, but uh, are just now showing up and are just now being taken care of uh, in a special way with a special funding by this act. So Steve, what are you hearing from the military community? Yeah, they're, they're they're obviously quite quite uh, quite supportive. Um, you know, the the there, there was a trope, Deirdre, after Vietnam War that uh, that veterans came back and they were broken, and they had PTSD, and it was false then and it's false now. Uh, some things to think about: veterans uh, have make twenty percent more than the average American. Uh, the veteran unemployment rate is 35% better than the average American. So veterans are, are an important contributing part of society. But there are those who have been broken by war and who need taking care of in special ways. And the burn pit issue was not understood. Uh, it is becoming more well understood. And now the Congress has taken the step and the president signing today this bill that will add monies to the Veterans Administration account to be able to take care of folks who seem to have been affected by these toxic chemicals. So, Steve, the president speaking not just as the commander in chief, but also as a grieving parent, remind us why this bill matters so much to him personally. Yeah, nobody, nobody can, other than a parent who's lost a child, no one can understand that pain. And so somebody like the president who had a son uh, go to war, come home, and you say, oh, they've, they've served, and now years later something turns up that takes their life. And that's what a lot of those veterans that you saw in the room with the president, that's, that's what the, the, the shock was, that they went, they served their country, they survived, they came home, had productive lives, and then years later something that they were exposed to, or for some reason they developed these terrible mystery illnesses. And so that's why the president has this vested emotional interest. Yeah, emotional for many, and in fact, many appeared to be overcome with emotion, including TV host John Stewart. He was there when the vote initially passed, even getting a standing ovation at the White House today. What do you think about that response? I mean, it's in support of him publicizing, right, this issue for many. John Stewart did a, did a great thing here because he pushed forward, he, he rallied public opinion around this uh, idea. For years it had been resisted by the Congress, as I said, because there was no metrics. You couldn't say these, these um, 
veterans or this number of veterans, this percentage of veterans are getting sick with these kinds of diseases because of this kind of exposure. So without that metric, it was all almost anecdotal. But finally, with people like John Stewart creating this, this, this huge wave of momentum of public opinion, forcing the Congress to come to grips, and that is what uh, was celebrated in the room there uh, with the president. Steve, thank you so much. We appreciate your thoughts. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. Inflation slows slightly in July as prices increase 8.5% in the past year. Let's take a listen to that video from ABC News. Is this reality? The new DQ Reese's Take 5 Blizzard with five levels of flavor. Reese's Peanut Butter Cups, Caramel Peanuts, and Pretzels. Next level! Someone just reached a new dimension. DQ, happy tastes good. Tamer than forecast report on inflation. The government posting this morning that inflation was up 8.5% last month compared to a year ago, so better than what analysts were expecting. Earlier today, President Biden saying it's a sign inflation is beginning to moderate. We're seeing a stronger labor market where jobs are booming and Americans are working. And we're seeing some signs that inflation may be getting to moderate. That's what happens when you build an economy from the bottom up and the middle out. The wealthy do very well and everyone has a chance. It gives everyone a chance to make progress. For more, we bring in now ABC News' Kenneth Moulton and business reporter Alexis Christophorus. Glad to have you both. So, Alexis, if we put up these boards at stock market much higher today, investors seem cheered by this cooler inflation report. There's the green on the screens. But who's concerned more about inflation, younger or older generations? Do we know? Well, I think that we can fairly say everybody's concerned because everybody's affected, whether you're an older person living on a fixed income, whether you're a young person starting out. Inflation and these highest prices we've seen in 40 years are simply inescapable. And taking a look at the report we got this month, inflation up 8.5% year over year. Hardly something we want to be cheering about because it is still near a 40-year high, although we are seeing the rise in prices starting to slow. So it's a small win, but we're going to take it. Here you see gas prices, big reason why that number started to pull back, down 7.7% as we all get to have a little relief finally at the gas price pump with gas prices now averaging about four dollars a gallon nationwide airfares down 7.8 percent after jumping earlier but look more essentials still going up food up better than one percent rent which is about 40 percent of this particular index up seven tenths of a percent so there is still a lot of work to be done and alexa says we have pointed out with food and rent that leaves a lot of families with not a lot of flexibility on this point of potential optimism, Kenneth, we know President Biden hopeful about an economic recovery. What are polls showing? What are your sources saying about Americans sharing his sense of optimism? Well, the president is hopeful and he's hoping his optimism rubs off on the American people. He's seen the numbers. We've all seen the numbers. And 62 percent of Americans disapprove of this president's handling of the economy less than three months ago into the midterms. That's still not good news for the president. But he's got quite a few major legislative victories at this point. Americans just seem to feel the impact of these laws in their homes, Deirdre. That makes sense, Kenneth. So we'll see what happens, as you say, with midterms. In the meantime, another big calendar date. Alexis, we know some schools are reopening. Depends on where you live in the country. But how is inflation affecting how parents are shopping for their kids? Yeah, like I said earlier, it, it, this is inescapable, these higher prices. And so back to school supplies uh, is nothing different there. We've got a basket of roughly a dozen different uh, school supplies. And overall, they're up about 15%. Backpacks are going to set you back. The price, they're up 12%. Now the average backpack going to cost you 70 bucks. It looks like Americans are going to be spending $170 more on back to school supplies than they did uh, pre pandemic. 60% of folks out there shopping say they are looking for sales. They are looking for coupons. They're also turning to, um, you know, store brands as opposed to some of the more well known brands they are looking for any which way uh, they can save and going to stores like discount stores like Walmart and Target. I don't know about you, but I have not started my list yet. 
I'm, I'm trying, you know, holding off, but I got to get there at some point. No, all those tips are important. Kenneth, I want to ask you about this idea, the Inflation Reduction Act. You have been following it from D.C. We know that it's not likely to have a short term effect, as Alexis was talking about, back to school. What's the long term best view? Well, this view here in Washington about this Inflation Reduction Act is that Democrats love it. Uh, Republicans hate it, sums up Washington. Uh, we know that this act does a number of big things on climate agenda for health care, but on inflation, as you just pointed out, as Alexis has pointed out throughout the day and before here on ABC News Live, the experts say will do little to bring immediate relief. House Democrats are hoping to get it done in the coming days after Senate Democrats passed it over the weekend. The House is back Friday, so we will see how long it takes. Kenneth, thank you. Alexis, thank you. Glad to have you both here. Hi, everyone. Okay, and that is it for this evening edition of the Riley King Newscast right here on the Riley King Network. Thank you for tuning in and watching. Have a great evening. Good night. Goodbye.